What's up, guys? Today we're going to be talking about Bing! The Righteous by David Ragg. So, guys, this is book number two in the duology of Articles of Faith, bringing this whole story to an end. But before you guys go running away because of spoilers, just know I'm going to keep this thing really nice and tight, spoiler-free. Uh, the, the only information you'll get is the stuff that I've basically released in my Blackhawks review. And I'm just going to go into what I feel that David Ragg has done, what he has added, and so on. Okay? Okay. Let's get into it. The Righteous will have us reunite with the colorful cast and crew of the Blackhawks. Now, this is going to be Vendran Shale, who is an oath-bound knight. He is a young man, but he's also not stoked about this oath and being a knight at, at all. And then we have a very spoiled prince named Tarful, who can be a lot of fun, but it's mostly at his own expense. And then as well, we have the Black Hawk Company themselves, that good old misfit band of mercenaries that just can't ever seem to get it right. Now, at the end of Black Hawks, our, you know, our cast and crew here has been put in a very certain situation in a certain place, and that is where they were left. And so we pick up here in The Righteous about two weeks after those events. And, you know... If you've read the first book, you know that David Ragg likes to take his characters out of the frying pan and throw them straight back into the fire. Just like the Blackhawks, The Righteous is a fucking great, fast-paced ride filled with comedy, action, and really, this one hits you in the heart as well. One of the first things I want to get into is going to be... David Ragg's writing, because coming off of the Blackhawks, I think that a lot of people are going to notice quite a bit of improvement in the writing. Not that Blackhawks is bad. I do have that, uh, you know, I made that criticism that the, you know, part one, the first 70 pages of, Bla of the Blackhawks is a little rough. It's, you know, it's dense and there's some just like not a lot of those dialogue tags and whatnot. And then as soon as you get into part two, it's like a whole nother book and, and an easy like to digest and whatnot. The Righteous from beginning to end is good. It's, it starts strong in strong, and it plays strong throughout. There is no like weak part. There's no part of this book where I'm going to have to warn you that you got to bear and get through it. No, it's like he's tightened things up. But this also affects a lot of the other areas. Things, you know, you might, if you saw my other review, you know that, you know, I, I praise this stuff. Like, it's hyper hilarious, hyper violent. It's a lot of these things, which, whereas I could see people even saying it's grimdark, but I don't see it as grimdark. It's not that nihilistic or bleak. It is violent at times, and it is realistic at times. But I think with his writing getting a little bit better and him, like, balancing things out, you will find this book hilarious, but I didn't find it as over the top as the Blackhawks, and that's not a bad thing. Like I said, I could see that he's kind of pinched it back, reined it in a little bit, and that's a good thing. Not that Blackhawks was bad. I, I applaud it for its zany fucking nature and just all-out fuckery. And it's not that, once again, it's not that the righteous is lacking any fuckery, because there is plenty. I just think that he has found a way to balance it out, to write it, better it's more believable instead of just and less cartoonish and I, I, once again it's not saying that the Blackhawks was cartoonish this is just a testament that to David Ragg and his evolution in his writing the next thing I want to get into is the magic system of these books or really the lack of and I don't say that in a like a negative way though some people might hear it as such and this is why I want to talk about it David Ragg has wrote a duology here. It's a fantasy duology, but it has no magic, okay? Zero magic. And now people are like, <gasps> <gasps> and I even, in our in my interview with David, he was talking about, you know, it's, of course it's fantasy. If it's not, then what else is it? And it, this is definitely a fantasy adventure, guys. Never throughout these two books was I ever like, oh man, you know, this thing, it's lacking magic. No, I knew that the magic wasn't there, but it didn't bug me a fucking inch. In fact, I applaud David Ragg for having the balls to write a fantasy journey without fucking magic, okay? But here in book two, he does do a little something for you guys that are screaming for magic. He does introduce a sort of alchemy element to the whole thing, um, which is a lot of fun because you're still dealing with people that don't quite understand alchemy, so they could kind of see it as magic. The next thing I want to talk about is the action in the book because in the Blackhawks, 
uh, my review, I praise the action, and I am going to praise the action once again, because it is fucking nice, dude. David Bragg has a great way of writing his action that is believable. Um, it can get real visceral on you, so you you can really envision this stuff, guys, and it's just what makes it so much fun. Now, I know you heard me earlier talk about how he has become a more balanced author, so this has pinched back some areas, and some of that is that bloody guts and grime uh, that is kind of like that grim dark aspect, and I'm not saying it's gone, it's just pinched back a little bit, but the action is still there. In fact, I would say the action is even built up a little more in this one and he just delivers it in a great way we know you know after interviewing david that vendron shell you know we're getting this stuff through him so it makes sense the way that he's going to describe the way the action is all kind of going down he doesn't have this play-by-play battle veteran like take on things it's a very young youthful and uninformed take on like war and sword play so this being like kind of thrown back to us as the reader it just it's really easy to digest and a lot of fun next i want to talk about the characters because this is where these books really shine guys like these characters that david rag created are fucking lovable misfits they are the black hawk company themselves is just made up of these mercenaries that really are a losers club of the elite fighting force (laughs) and then you have vendron shell who is just he's young man he's a young guy who probably thinks he knows way more than he actually does um, but you know when you uh, when it all boils down he does kind of have a good heart he is going to put himself in harm's way to protect like innocence or to do the right thing like when it all boils down Vendron Shell kind of is a knight and then we have Prince Tarful rolling off of the Black Hawks man Tarful was the punching bag and it was nothing but fun and here I'm not saying he doesn't take his jabs But this book is kind of, the story is evolving into something a little bit more serious. Like the stakes are, you know, they're raising. So along with this, that spoiled little punching bag of a Prince Tarful will have to play a more important and integral role. And it is kind of fun to watch this kid have to try to make, you know, take a step up and and, and use like his power responsibly. Then we have the Black Hawk Company themselves. And let's just start with Rennick because Rennick is awesome i love this guy as a commander of the you know he's just a survivalist he is he's not a shining leader you know he's got muck and dirt all over him but he is a dude that always seems to kind of fucking survive he always will get through and his the way he kind of teaches things is very much from a survivalist standpoint he's not here for honor you know he's not a hero and that's what one thing I just love about Rennick. The other thing I really love about his character, though, is this relationship that he has with Chell. Like, the way that those two play off of each other is so much fun. And that's a huge part of what I loved about these two books, is that specific relationship. It, it is very much like a mentor, mentee, you know, a master-apprentice relationship, but it's also a little unconventional and it's also conventional. I, it's great. Most people rolling off of the Blackhawks are probably going to be waiting to get back to Lemon. Now, Lemon is our Clydish gal. We we know she's got a fucking mouth on her, and she is always just talking trash in the best ways. She is a lot of fun, and she remains a lot of fun. Like, honestly, I have no gripes. All of Lemon's parts in this book were fucking gold, and I think that everyone else that was a fan of her in book one is just going to continue to enjoy her crazy ass here in this one. Another character I want to talk about is Loveless. Now, in in the book one, you know, some of these characters got some a little bit of shine, but then, you know, there was obviously some that had way more focus. The one thing I really liked about Loveless's character in book one is she seems like a very, like, badass, you know what I mean? But there is a moment in that book where she shows, um, you know, a level of vulnerability. You know, she shows that she's human. And I really liked that, though it was only a little bit. But here into book two, I feel like we just get so much more of that. David Rag really fleshes out this character for us. Now, I do have to say, by the end of this book, there might be some people that have take some issue with maybe certain threads being left open. I know from talking with David that the, you know there, there were some decisions made in the editing process 
Well, and I knew that before going in, so I'm thinking this might be one of those, the thread that they're talking about. Now, with that being said, I read this whole thing, and I had to guess. So that goes to say something, right? Like, I'm not so crystal clear sure that this is the one that people are bitching about so you might not even like have an issue with this you might be completely satisfied with everything that has been delivered here uh for the characters and if not i do know that david rag was saying that he will be adding the part that was edited out onto his website and i'll put a link to that uh, in the description the last thing i want to talk about is just the overall tone and like the the stakes that david rag sets here in book two as well as just you know the satisfaction level do I think that he closes everything up? Did he, you know, stick the landing, as my buddy David Desero likes to say? Um, so, yes, I, I'm going to go into this real quick. So the overall tone, like I was just saying earlier, it's more serious, and it's not in a bad way. Like, this is, makes a lot of sense. For the situation that our characters have found themselves in, this is when, you know, it, things will stop getting, you know, so funny, and they start getting very real, and you're just like, fuck, every you know, every second. <laughs> so it, it's, there is still plenty of levity here in the story, but you will feel, you will be grounded in the, you know, the reality that this is a serious situation now and shit's very real. As far as these books being considered grimdark, I still personally do not consider them. I know that David Rag does not consider them grimdark, but I could see where some people might call them that. You know, they do have a little bit of that unheroic fantasy style. Some of these characters are, you know, they're dirtbaggish. Also, another thing, you know, personally, David Rag has really made me kind of go back to the drawing board when it comes to what the fuck is Grimdark. Because I always looked at it like, hey, it's a, it's a subverting of tropes. Like, the more tropes that you're subverting, probably the closer you're getting to Grimdark. Because it's, to me, it's almost like the anti-fantasy, you know? Not meaning that it's not fantasy, but the anti-fantasy, like anti-Western. It's still a fantasy, it's just, it is zagged where everyone else zigged. But what David Rag does is not so much doing these like twists and subverting tropes in a grimdark manner just really just in in a progression that fantasy is going this is an adult it's an adult fantasy story both these books they're for they're for an adults you know yeah maybe a younger crowd could still get into them because vinger and shell is somewhat of a younger guy but still when it all boils down to it these are not bleak nihilistic tales that are flipping tropes just you know to make things darker it's just this thing kind of keeps you on your toes and it plays out like something more realistic, I guess, while still keeping a very great fantasy adventure vibe. People that are like into, uh, you know, like me, I loved Willow as a kid. I feel like people that grew up in that era that love that good old fashioned fucking fantasy adventure are going to love these books. And I do think that David Rag brings this thing to a close in a great manner. I felt a massive amount of satisfaction. Is everything buttoned up, closed up, and explained in the end? No, but it is very much to a point that I can step away and say, God damn it, those books were great. So as far as my two cents for the slow and the struggling, yes, I do think that the book is for you. In fact, I believe that this duology is something that you guys can pick up, read, feel accomplished, and love. David Rag's writing style will pose some problems for some of you. It's not a super, you know, bare bones, straightforward. He's got a great writing style. It's beautiful at times. It could, it's, I wouldn't call it dense. I do think that maybe the very beginning of Blackhawks has a little bit of denseness to it, but the rest of it is just more, just very well described. He does at times have a bit of a flowery writing style, but I just think it pays off because of the way that he describes shit. It's just, it's enjoyable. You can digest it and have fun with it. He's not going to bury you under two tons of exposition, and his pacing is just on point, and that's what's really going to be good for you guys. Don't worry about the writing style because his pacing is going to bring you from point A to point B in relative ease, and that's the good thing because you can start to challenge yourself with writing that isn't maybe so bare bones or straightforward while still being able to keep a normal pace. This, is, this kind of stuff is important while you're struggling because we want you to become accomplished. We don't want you dilly-dallying and fucking fucking off and, and just losing track and further going into some kind of re reading slump tailspin, okay? We're here to fucking juice you up, baby. All right? All right, guys. As always, thanks for spending some time.
down here at the channel, and to David Rag, a kadoosh, two thumbs up, dude, I love what you did with your story, sir, and honestly, I can't fucking wait to see what you cook up next, the level of progression I have seen in your writing from book one to book two, well, it just gets me real goddamn excited to see what you're gonna hit us with next, okay, no rush, you know what I mean, take your time, enjoy your accomplishment, this is a great set of books, man, fuck yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, I have horrible transitions. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you're new, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And that is what we're trying to do here. So yeah, do it. Anyway, you know what time it is, all right? Boom.